Good morning. I uh, seem to be having a hard time with, just with my fingers this morning. They're uh, kind of frozen up, but I think we're ready to go. Listen, I know that last week our broadcast got interrupted. I'm not exactly sure what happened. I think that that happened even to some other folks in the Western area. So my hunch is it was a Facebook glitch. Uh, if that were to happen today or again, what I'll do is scoop things up and go over to the house and start over again. So it'll come back up. So be patient. I uh, uh, We're doing the best we can, you know, and sometimes there are glitches along the way. Uh, it's good to, uh, gosh, it's good to be together. It's awful hard to be apart, you know. It, it's just terribly frustrating. I noticed that the cases in West Virginia are uh, hit an all-time high. The, the new cases were over a thousand in, in West Virginia today. So uh, we're going to do our very best to stay safe, to keep you safe, uh, and 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 try to be as creative as we can, to be present to one another in as many ways as we can, to to be reminded that. Um, Something that we've always said, and we we certainly know, and that is that our church is bigger than a than a building. It really depends on each and every one of our efforts and, and ability to to be intentional, especially at this time, about how we reach out to one another, stay in communication and in contact with one another. Uh, and I'm hearing great stories about how that's happening. I um, would encourage you to keep that up because there are, this is a very emotionally trying time. I know that you know that better than I can say it. It seems like some days we're okay and, and some days we're not. And, and it's on those days when we're not that, gosh, it's really good to hear from a fellow parishioner of St. Paul's Church here in Weston or Transfiguration Episcopal Church in Buchanan. So let's do our very best over the next days and weeks to, to stay in contact with one another. Um, we are going to uh, continue to on this Facebook Live pattern until things get better. And we're hopeful that things will get better. I watched on the news this morning as the first vaccines rolled out. And I know it's going to take a while for all that to take hold, but there is hope on the horizon. But until that time, we we all need to do the things necessary to keep ourselves and one another safe, wearing masks, keeping distance, uh, washing our hands, and for the time being, not being together in the beauty of the churches that we love, but being together in the beauty of the fellowship that we love which we're trying as best we can do today here on, on Facebook Live. So again, I, I thank you for, uh, for joining in. Uh, there is a comment bar in the bottom left hand of your uh, screen. And um, there are probably things or people on your mind that you would like prayed for. So if you would like, I'll, I'll try to check that. Sometimes I can and sometimes I can't. But even if I can't, people who are together with us will see that, and I'll pick that up and pray for those needs each week. Um, so again, I, I thank you for your patience. I thank you above all for your dedication. It's a difficult time. Uh, that's the understatement of the year, I know. Uh, but we are doing the best we can in the most creative way that we can to try to be together. A uh, couple of announcements. We will, our Bible study will meet this week, uh, Wednesday night at six. Uh, that's on Zoom and uh, you get an invitation to that. If you don't, or you'd like some help on how to sign in, let us know, call the church office. Mary's here from one to four on Mondays through Thursday uh, and she can help you get that set up. We've had a little bit of feedback and we'll probably send out a, a notice at the first of the year. Uh, if that time's a good time, some people say it is, some people say it's not. Uh, and if the content is good for you, uh, 
We a few years ago we did a uh, an introduction to the Episcopal Church and kind of did a an introduction to the prayer book, and it was really good, you know, both for practicing Episcopalians and those who might just be interested in learning more about the Episcopal Church. So uh, we're considering launching that the first of the year. This Wednesday will be the last Bible study uh, until the first of the year. And in the meantime, we'll send out some questionnaires and, and, and seek your feedback. We will continue to be together on Facebook Live for the next for the foreseeable future. And we're going to be here Christmas Eve at 7 o'clock. So mark your calendars. And gosh, it just seems unreal that, you know, I mean, so much of this church both of these church buildings are so much a part of our lives that it's not going to be safe for us to be together on Christmas, but the time is coming and we're hopeful. So we will be live on Facebook Live Christmas Eve at 7 and, and of course, next Sunday at 11. Uh, I want to take a moment to thank everybody for your participation in the Salvation Angel Tree. This is something that has been a ministry of St. Paul's for several years. And again, you rose to the occasion. So I thank you for that. And just remind you that even though we're not gathering in person, you know, the expenses and needs of the church go on. I want to thank everybody who has continued to send in your pledge or your offering. And if you haven't, uh, uh, try to do that. We, we really need your financial support as well. I I, I, it, I hate to talk about it, but I need to. And you need, we all need to be aware of, of, of the needs that we have. So that's a whole bunch of uh, announcements. Let's take a moment and remind ourselves of the presence of God that calls us all together on this third Sunday of Advent and place ourselves in God's presence. O come, desire of nations, bind in one the hearts of all humankind. Bid that our sad divisions cease, and be thyself our King of peace. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel, shall come to thee, O Israel. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Stir up your power, O Lord, and with great might come among us. And because we are sorely hindered by our sins, let your bountiful grace and mercy speedily help and deliver us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory now and forever. Amen. This is a reading from John's Gospel. 
There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. This is the testimony given by John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, who are you? He confessed and did not deny it, but confessed, I am not the Messiah. And they asked him, well, what then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, no. Then they said to him, well, who are you? Let us have an answer for those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? And he said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Now they had been sent from the Pharisees, and they asked him, well, why then are you baptizing? if you are neither the Messiah, nor Elijah, nor the prophet. John answered them, I baptize with water. Among you stands one whom you do not know, the one who is coming after me. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandal. And this took place in Bethany across the Jordan where John was baptizing. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Almighty God, we have heard your word proclaimed here in our midst. May your word shape and form us into the people you have called us to become. Amen. Among you is one whom you do not know. That was the message of John the Baptist. Among you is one whom you do not know. In their very, very midst, there was a quiet son of a carpenter from the backwater region of the Roman Empire, nudging shoulder to shoulder with a whole crowd of lots of people. And no one had a clue that this unimpressive man was the one, the Son of God, the Word of God, who had been a part of God's presence from the very beginning of time, from the very beginning and creation of the world. Among you is one you do not know. Now, I don't know about you, but if the Son of God on earth, the very Word of God through whom all things were made, was walking about on the earth that he created, would not common sense tell you that he would not be someone that you would miss? Someone that would never ever go unseen? I mean, shouldn't his presence be detectable with just a glance and be obvious? Among you stands someone you do not know. They had waited for him. They had prayed for his coming. They had whispered hope that he was coming to make things right. And yet as he stood in their midst, shoulder to shoulder and toe to toe, he was rudely pushed out of the way so that others could get to his cousin, John the Baptist. John the Baptist, who in reply to the Pharisees and the Levites and the priests who had come to question him, said, I am not the Messiah. I am not Elijah. I am not the prophet. 
I myself am not the light, but in your mix stands someone who you do not know. Jesus came into the world in such nondescript packaging that to most people, he didn't look like, he didn't talk like, he didn't act like, he didn't in any way resemble what they expected the Savior of the world to be like. You could stand with him in the baptismal line, shuffling your way towards the water's edge, waiting to be dunked by John the Baptist, and who had no clue that he was standing shoulder to shoulder right next to you. But that's always been God's way, hadn't it? I mean, that's the gospel way. Salvation comes from quiet strength, the gentle humility, the servant, heart of God's only son. The word who spoke everything into being at the very beginning of time joined our existence, not so much as a booming, thundering word, but more like a whisper. Perfectly willing to be anonymous to the Herods and Caesars of the world to make himself known to the blind and the lame and the deaf and the leper and the prostitute and the fisherman and to so many others who were largely invisible and whose own holiness often went unnoticed. John the Baptist says, among you stands one whom you do not know. Jesus knew something about not being noticed. He knew something about not being seen. And maybe, just maybe, that's why he was so good at lifting up others who got passed by the last, the least, the lost, and the lonely. Among you is one whom you do not know. But here's the good news. If, if today you know him, if by the gift of faith, you are able to recognize him. Be thankful because his presence is not obvious to all people. So if you know him, if you recognize him, pray the Holy Spirit will open your eyes and open your heart and open your mind and open your mouth so that you and I and we together can announce his presence to all those invisible people, all those people out there who are least and lost and last and lonely. If we recognize him, on this third Sunday of Advent, we are called to imitate the example of John the Baptist and testify to tell others about his presence in our world because it's a presence that our world so, so sorely needs. Let's pray. Dear and gracious God, on this third Sunday of Advent, open our eyes, open our hearts, open our minds to recognize your presence that dwells in our midst that may sometimes be overlooked. And when we find a good and gracious God, help us to announce it 
to a world that so, so, so sorely hungers and aches and needs that healing presence. Amen. Okay, I am going to look for prayer requests. I have some. Um, so, here's what I have. I um, let's pray, especially this weekend. Uh, for Betty Bland and Betty's family. Uh, Betty died yesterday afternoon, early evening. Uh, the arrangements are incomplete, but of course, Betty, Betty was our oldest member here at St. Paul's in West End and uh, a pillar of our church and her whole family needs raised up and lifted up in our prayers. We also pray for the family of George Whalen, another pillar of this community and, and of Lewis County who was buried on Thursday. So for the repose of their souls, we pray, and for their families that, got, that are left behind feeling the pain and, and emptiness. We, we certainly remember them in our prayers. Uh, let's pray for Jill, uh, for Steve, um, for Karen and Tom and Mentor, uh, for Bill and Deb and Michaela and Zach and Jana, for Dave Walton and Desi, uh, for Rick, for uh, Laura Abrazino's mom, for Margot and, and Caleb and, and Mimi and, and John and, and Rachel. Um, for all these, and, and, and Lord, you know our hearts, you know our needs probably better then we know of them ourselves, but we as a, 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 a group, a community of believers this morning, lift these people up into your loving hands to take care of. Again, I thank you for being here. We're gonna be here together for the foreseeable future. We'll be here next Sunday at 11 and Christmas Eve at 7 p.m. So uh, I again, praise you and applaud you for your intentionality of taking care of one another and, and those in our community. Um, your ministry to one another makes a huge difference. And uh, even when you think it doesn't, it, re it really does. So I thank you for that. I thank you for being here. Uh, I thank you for your prayer. And please know that you are remembered in ours. And let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us this morning with, with your word. Send us into the world in peace. Grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. The blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. God love you. God bless you. God keep you safe. We'll see you next week.